Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone around the globe. Welcome to Hexnode Partners Summit 2021. I'm really uh, delighted to be here today and speaking up. And uh, I would really like to appreciate the Hexnode team for putting together such a wonderful event for all the partners. And uh, this could be really helpful and insightful for everyone. So the topic that I'd be speaking today is capacity building and digital collaboration post COVID era for business expansion. But before I dive into this topic, I'd like to talk a bit about my company from which I belong. It's SETI General Trading LSE. It's based in UAE. And we have been working in the education sector for a very long time, more than a decade or so. And our primary focus has been to introduce innovative interactive technology within the market. And as such, we came across Hexnode because of this. We always believe in dynamic, innovative, latest trending uh, technology to be in the market. And uh, we felt that Hexnode is one of them and we wanted to uh, be one of the distributors, resellers for Hexnode in UAE and give uh, the people of UAE a chance to experience this uh, wonderful services. A uh, bit more about our company uh, could not be complete without uh, letting us uh, all know about the CEO. Our CEO is Sonia Salim. She's a uh, Pakistani by uh, residency, uh, but uh, she lives in Dubai. She's uh, the UAE based and uh, uh, she believes that uh, the modern world is, uh, you know, working really hard. It's going with lighter speed and uh, as such, we need to uh, keep up with the uh, modern pace and bring a uh, new innovative technology that could compete in the market, that could uh, provide benefit, that could uh, set uh, trends up to the mark. So uh, she's a really um, uh, determined woman and because of her, uh, SETI has uh, reached uh, heights in UAE and uh, has, uh, received many uh, um, uh, you know, awards and icon awards, uh, innovation awards as well. So um, uh, all thanks to Sonia. As you see on the screen myself, uh, Gibran, I'm the executive director of uh, SETI General Trading. And because of this particular reason, I am be, I have been invited to become a speaker on Hexnode Partners Summit. And obviously, um, uh, because of my experience in the digital world, uh, I've been, uh, as you can see, my quotation would uh, signify that I believe in equity instead of uh, equality uh, because, uh, you know, you know, uh, with equity in the market, equity in the competitive market of uh, today's modern post COVID era, uh, we will be able to meet all challenges that are put forth to us because of COVID. So, you know, it's important for us to look at the concept of equity and actually practice that, that instead of uh, promoting equality right now. Moving on, uh, a bit about more but CDI and Hexnode partnership, uh, we've been in collaboration with uh, Hexnode for about uh, three years now. And uh, CDI has been uh, the primary solution provider for reseller and reseller for Hexnode in the Middle East. Uh, we've uh, been, uh, you know, uh, promoting Hexnode for, for a long time and uh, getting it reached to the end clients, uh, to corporate clients, to government clients and to other stakeholders. Um, we have a certain set of team, about three to five people actively working uh, only and significantly on uh, promoting Hexnode in the Middle East, in the region, and also in Pakistan. Uh, as you can see, the SETI has uh, done a wonderful job to our size and pack for Hexnode in the Middle East and Pakistan. We've uh, worked really hard. We've uh, made sure that we uh, put our, give our best and uh, put, our, put forward the best foot. And, um, you know, we've uh, carried out extensive trainings, virtual trainings with Hexnode and alongside with Hexnode for our clients to for them to understand Hexnode, to, uh, you know, uh, to believe in Hexnode, to get familiarized with Hexnode and to accept it in the first place. So, how uh, did we, uh, you know, manage to promote Hexnode in the uh, Middle East and Pakistan is a big question. It's a big strategy uh, question, and uh, for that, I'd like to uh, discuss a bit. Uh, as you can see, uh, we adopted all uh, practices, ATL, BTL, and hybrid, above the line, below the line, and hybrid practices. Among them was digital marketing. You know, digital marketing right now is the key essence of success 
in the market right now. What we believe is that if your digital marketing tactics are up to the mark on point, you have a 90% of chance to engage all potential customers and uh, get them aware with your product services, and in this case, Hexnode. So we use social media such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, and etc. Uh, for uh, for creating a brand image, for creating a brand stability, brand establishment of Hexnode within the region as a local service provider. And for that, we were there to be uh, the face of Hexnode and to provide all the services the local client needed. Then again, we did the search and optimization tactics. Uh, for this, uh, we obviously, uh, if you're not familiar, search and op engine optimize helps. Uh, keywords uh, you, uh, you use to search uh, different services, in this case, Hexnode, uh, to make Hexnode website pop up in the start. And so that uh, we did this uh, regionally so that if uh, something, someone, some corporate client wants to look for a mobile device management, some uh, corporate client wants to look for mobile device management services, they would probably hop onto our website and uh, check out Hexnode and uh, send, us, uh, send us a query. And this was really important uh, step as well. Then we also used uh, mass emailing tactics uh, to our uh, regular uh, clients, uh, to our uh, newspaper uh, news uh, uh, paper list uh, uh, listings. And uh, we created lead generations via Facebook, LinkedIn, and through MailChimp. So these were some uh, strategies that we combined together when we, uh, when we were executing digital marketing. Then lobbying. A lot of people ask what lobbying is. Lobbying, in my opinion, is one of the strongest traits for you to establish a brand and make sure it captures a market in the region. We uh, got in touch with influential people, with people who were in the decision making authority or were in a place to influence the decision making people or uh, create uh, stakes within the market. And we uh, promoted Hexnode, we uh, made them understand what Hexnode is, how important it is for the market, how important it could be uh, for the future generation, for the future of uh, um, you know Middle East uh, market, and how we can take control of the technology. So in a way, you know, we kind of uh, subconsciously planted different ideas related to Hexnode in a positive manner among the people who could in the future from the real um, business aspect of Hexnode. Then we had a continuous help desk, a virtual help desk, help desk and a physical help desk throughout uh, our tenure since three years uh, at our offices in the UAE. Uh, or, or everyone could actively uh, connect with us and discuss anything related to Hexnode. And we were also supported greatly with Hexnode support team we could uh, get everyone in line at the same time and uh, discuss any on all possible support features that were there or question and answers. So help Dex has been uh, wonderful uh, when it came to support uh, support uh, providing. The indirect influence. So what's indirect influence? Indirect influence is the use of references, word of mouth, clients, client, uh, channel marketing. We used resellers, uh, our uh, long list of resellers for different uh, product lines uh, get get aligned with us uh, when we use when we brought in Hexnode. So a lot of people, a lot of uh, clients, uh, when one client buys Hexnode, the, they talk about it. They give our reviews. They recommend their uh, you know colleagues. They recommend their fellow companies. That's how we were able to establish the credibility of Hexnode and promote it and get awareness and obviously linkage within the market, especially in the education sector and the corporate sector. Then uh, the print media, uh, we uh, as SETI have been uh, always engaged with the print media. We use uh, Emirati Business Magazine uh, to promote ourselves. So in this case, what we did is we uh, used the same platform for uh, promoting Hexnode as uh, MDM services uh, that are available in the UAE and they have local representation. Uh, so the clients do not have to worry about support. The clients do not worry, uh, want to, don't have to worry about what will they do once things go wrong, if they go wrong, which 
is highly unlikely when it comes to Hicks node support because they're brilliant in a brilliant at it. So we use the pin media as well. That was something to cater those clients who were um, more keen and are who give more value to print media and feel the, uh, that uh, a certain thing is more legit when it is shown or it's printed on the print media. Uh, moving on, uh, more about merging the gap. Uh, so, you know, Hexnode is a service which if, uh, um, you know, if you don't understand it properly, you won't be able to get it. You won't be able to comprehend what the service is all about. So we bridge this gap by, you know, creating content and setting up meetings in which uh, we talk uh, with the client in a layman language, which uh, help them understand what Hexnode is, what the service is all about, and uh, how they could make use of it, how uh, they don't need to be technical enough to use the Hexnode services at its best. So we bridged that gap, which was really important, you know, because when it comes to technology, people are afraid of change, people are afraid of adopting, people are afraid of being uh, called out as to if they don't know a particular thing, they will feel uh, less important or uh, in certain cases, if it has to be a, an extreme, they feel useless, but this is what we did. We bridged the gap. We made them comfortable when it came to technology, and in this case, hex node. Then policy level change. So we always believe that if you need to implement something at a mass level, it has to be done at a strategic policy level. So we got into uh, with uh, through by lobbying and uh, by uh, connecting with government uh, people who were uh, influencers. Say we tried to influence the policy makers to bring in a policy that would support the services of Hexnode and likes so that Hexnode could have a better chance of capturing the market at a ground level and create a hedge money. Uh, regional target uh, engagement again. We uh, plan. We uh, last year due to COVID, uh, we plan to bring in live stream shout outs from the Hexno team itself, from ourselves, from our clients, so that people could engage with us, people could relate with us, people could believe that we're still there. We are there to help them out. The basic objective was to get them connected. So regional target engagement was really important because you know a lot of content is already there, but it's so generic that it's for the globe. So when you have a content that addresses the local uh, regional market itself, that's when people feel connected. That's when people feel owned. That's when people feel this is our brand, this is something that we should go for. So the question is, why do all this? What, what's the benefit? So the long term objectives, in my opinion and my company's opinion is to, uh, you know, if we adopt these uh, strategies, the digital marketing, the lobbying, the um, policy change, we are there to establish Hexnode as a credible brand in the UAE and Pakistani market. We are getting them credible. We are making people aware that Hexnode exists. It's a local service provider. It, there's all the support they needed. There's a brand that they can trust, and that's a brand that's popular, that's familiar, that they can adopt. And in this, as such, it, they will feel more, ex, uh, you know, easy and uh, more open to transit, uh, transit themselves towards Hexnode. They will feel Hexnode, uh, you know, more easy to adopt and obviously that increases acceptability itself. What's the ultimate result? The ultimate result for every business is to get increased queries, lead conversions, sales, revenue, increased market share, market dominance leading to hedge money. I believe the last point, market dominance leading to hedge money is the key point. When we have increased sales, increased queries, lead generation converse, conversions, uh, increased market share, we can go. If we keep on uh, working at the right uh, right time, we keep on working at the right path, follow the right roadmap, we can get Hexno to become the hege hegemonic presence in the UAE and Pakistani market. So that's the ultimate result. That's something that we should all strive for in our regions. 
Moving on. So capacity building and digital collaboration in the post COVID era. What I mean here is not just capacity building when we say just getting training. What I mean is, you know, when your employee, your employee is the biggest innovative asset a company could ever have. If you have an employee who is skillful, who is effective, who is communicative, uh, who is, uh, uh, you know, confident, trust me, your company will reach the highest levels as fast as is good. I mean, it's great to have good promotions, good marketing skills, but your product or service is as good as your employee. Your employee is your major asset. The HR is your asset to improving the performance of your company in terms of every aspect, not just sales, business expansion, market share, promotions, uh, quality services, quality assurances, quality management systems, uh, support systems, life supports. All of them are bound on employee. Even when it comes to automation, employees, HR is there. Someone has to automate the process if it has to be automated. So what you need to do is you need to analyze your company and your HR. Where, what are the weaknesses and their strengths? You need to find those out and you need to find out ways how to cater them. If there are weaknesses, what weaknesses are there? Whether they are soft weaknesses, whether they are hard weaknesses, whether they require training, courses, certification, skill sets, improvements, capacity building, uh, webinars, uh, workshops, you need to get those done. These implementations will help you improve the quality that your employees put forth and improve the um, performance of your employees, hence the performance of your company. So once you do that, do a quarterly evaluation as to what you did, how it affected pre, uh, how it was before the uh, implementation and how it is now after the implementation, what further steps you require to imp uh, further improve and further make changes to get the performance even better now. So the market for future ready skills, uh, you know, we need to understand that COVID has brought forward, you know, brought forward a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges, which include when it comes to an employee working from home, they are working from a remote area, they need to be digitally literate. They need to be able to communicate using the tools for remote services to be able to communicate what they want, what they are selling, what they're providing as a support, or uh, what they uh, about in the internal meetings or external meetings and channel marketing. If the employee is not digitally literate, they don't know how to use the tools effectively, they don't know how to communicate effectively, then you or your company is at a crisis. No product, no service could sell if your employee is unable to communicate and use the market ready skills right now after COVID to be uh, to communicate, to get through to the client and make them comfortable via virtual meetings, via virtual webinars, via virtual emails. That's really important. So digital literacy is there, communication skills. Office ready skills for work from home is really important. Uh, virtual presentation skills, PowerPoint, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, different softwares uh, that you need to uh, use uh, to, you know, uh, communicate and present to your clients and get through to them and convince them. Then another thing that's really important is the neural linguistic prom programming training. You need to get your HR, the NLP trainings, Required them for them to be able to comfortably, confidently work from home without facing isolation challenges, without facing depression, without facing uh, different uh, key issues that are uh, the major obstacles when it comes to working from remote areas or work from home. So if you do this, we all know that the world is going towards the remote working and home uh, working from home concept and it's adopting it openly. Facebook, Google, um, different other organizations have uh, permanently set up many of the employees to work from home. Why? Because they know 
it is doable, it's possible. All it's, that needs is a proper systemized quality management solution. They need to look after the employees, give them the right skill sets, equip them with the right skill set, and have a systematic way of running things. Then your employee also needs to understand entrepreneurship. If your employee feels like an employee, they will only work like an employee. So if you, what I mean over here, it sounds really cliche, but what I mean over here is that if your employee has a thinking of creating more and more profit, more how and best they could provide for the company, that's the entrepreneurial mindset that will come in. They will not feel as an employee, as, a, as a, someone working for the company, they will feel as a stakeholder of the company. They will feel that if, you, if they succeed, the company will succeed, and in the end, it will be beneficial for them. So they need to have the ID skills, the digital marketing skills, the digital literacy, the communication skills. These skills are the most important things that an employee must have in the current COVID era. If your company were to succeed, and if your company really relies on your employees, in our, on our employees, if the company, if your or my company relies on the employees, they need to be equipped with the future ready skills. They need to be, uh, their capacity building should be increased. They, should, they need to be trained. They need to be having an entrepreneurial mindset, which will give them independence, which will give, uh, which will rid them from the barriers of uh, always uh, looking above, looking towards the seniors, which is not a bad thing, but some things, some initiatives, some uh, steps needs to be taken by the employee themselves to uh, guarantee success. Some uh, steps, some decisions need to be taken on spot. So they can only do that if they have the confidence, they can evaluate the situation, they can evaluate the position they are in and then take that step. So the skills that are in front of your in front of the screen, uh, screen right now, sorry, are the most important. So please, when you're looking at your employee, take a note of these things, evaluate them, analyze them on this, implement uh, needed uh, skills, evaluate them after quarters, get feedback, uh, create a report, and work accordingly, and you will see the difference. So why and how is it directly pushing to financial gains? I'm sure by my last discussion, my last slide, you got a pretty much good idea. So, you know, when an employee is uh, equipped with all the, you know, skill sets, you will automatically find increased productivity performance, uh, work, uh, uniformity in processes to reduce wastage, reduce supervision, which is excellent in nowadays, because no matter what you do, you cannot have complete supervision in the remote working concept and uh, and you need to trust your employee. The employee needs to feel confident, independent, and the employee needs to feel responsible towards their duties and towards their company. And that's what brings loyalty, honesty, and hard work within an employee. So different, um, uh, this also, you know, improves the morale, the knowledge, uh, the understanding of using the modern tools uh, to best create a difference for the market, create sales uh, for business expansion, for, uh, you know, uh, it also creates a virtual workplace environment. Everyone knows what they have to do, how they have to do, when they have to do, and where, um, wh when what has to happen at what, what particular time. So they feel they will feel all they will all feel synced, yeah, and when and if and when uh, the COVID uh, era ends, you know, even if the employee comes back to the office, these things will only add on to the efficiency level of your company, to the efficiency levels of operations, administration, sales, marketing, promotions, uh, expansions. So obviously. Uh, it will uh, create an impact that will uh, uh, give a boost to your company, which is not yet seen. Results. What are the results of building an effective team? An effective team can increase, like I said, effective teams can increase lead generations, revenue generations to leads, to marketing, to promotions, to word of mouth, to uh, even if uh, separate uh, people outside the company look at your employees, they will understand that your uh, company has a certain set of standards, how you run your company, how you treat your employees. 
that will also increase the credibility of your company. Hence, people will feel more aligned, more accepted towards your product and your services, and they will feel that this is a company that we should connect ourselves with, whether as a client, as a supplier, as a partner, as a salesperson. All these things matter. Your employees are as important as your customer base and how they interact can grow your business. It can be the deciding factor. It can mean your the success and failure of your company at every aspect of the business. And the training will bring all the trainings that you will you know, put forth for your employees will eventually convert into revenue generations later on because they will excite those trainings do things that they've learned and put it forth for uh, when they will be actually in the practical market, in the actual market, and they will use those skills and will do the best out of that. And then obviously all these factors uh, merge together and in the end helps your business expand. It helps your business scale to greater uh, numbers. Okay, uh, maybe some business has to expand uh, from outside the country. Some business has to expand outside the city. Some business has to expand globally. So all these factors will directly affect the expansion of your business. That means that if you're, for example, selling Hexner right now and you need to expand yourself, if your employees, if your HR, if your people working with you know how to effectively to use modern competitive required tools and skills to uh, market themselves market hex node that means you are looking towards a successful profitable expansion that could last that could be stable that could be mature and that's what the whole thing is worth that's thing that's it. sorry that's the whole thing that's about and that's worth it so this is uh Pretty much it, this is uh, what I've been trying to convey. I mean, the whole presentation has been uh, indirectly or directly been talking about the capacity building and how it's best to uh, get your uh, employees the future skills they need to indirectly or directly both affect your company in terms of sales, revenue generation, expansion. So uh, yes, um, this is it, and I would uh, once again like to say thank you to the Hexnode team for giving me this opportunity to speak on this platform. Thank you all for listening to me, and I hope you uh, take back some really good insights, some good pointers from this presentation. If you have any questions, queries, I'm here to answer your question queries, and uh, uh, my contact details are given on the presentation. You can see it. If you need to collaborate with me in the future, if you need my help setting up some, uh, you know, uh, similar things that I've spoken about for your company, I'll be more than happy to discuss it and uh, help you get on with it. Thank you so much, and uh, best of luck to everyone that's watching this.